Welcome to the first video in Calculus 3. We're going to start with 3D space, surfaces, planes, and spheres in this video. So in Calculus 3, the big jump is going from two dimensions to three dimensions. So you are probably used to seeing graphs with just two axes, X and Y, and on that graph, you would identify a point and you'd say it has value, say X1 and Y1, depending on what that is. So in this case, let's just say it was two in the X and three in the Y, we would write down two, three for that point. In three dimensional space, we see the same thing. And this would be the convention for drawing a third graph. So you can stick your right arm in front of you, the arm acts as the Y axis. If you curl your fingers towards you, so here's my horrible drawing of an arm, you curl your fingers towards you, and that would be the X axis, and then your thumb pointing up is the direction of the Z axis. So let's say we have a point here. Well, usually we use dotted lines to help us see where the point is. So let's say we went three in the X direction, we went two in the Y direction, so that would meet up about here, and then we went, say, uh, three or four in the Z direction, we would have the point here, uh, two, sorry, three in the X direction, so that would be three, two, and four. And uh, this drawing definitely is not perfect because it doesn't align nicely with the Z, but visually, if we just look at the dotted lines going up four, we can say that's four. So this point would be represented as X, Y, Z, because we have some number in the X, some number in the Y, and some number in the Z direction. So we represent these as triplets, X, Y, and Z, and we say they're in R3. What this just means is that the X comes from the real numbers, the Y comes from the real numbers, and Z comes from the real numbers. So we multiply that together, conventionally, then we get R3, but we can also write this as R by R by R. So let's practice actually doing a few points. So hopefully with a better drawing than I did previously. So negative 4, 1, 0. Oh. We're saying it's negative 4 in the X direction. That would put us here. We're going 1 in the Y direction. So that would be that point right there. And then we're not going up or down in the Z direction. So this would be the point negative four, one, zero. We don't need to go up or down because there's no Z dimension there. Well, there is the dimension, but we're not moving in it. Let's do the second point, which I'll do in green. So this will be three, one, and negative five. So we'll go three in the X direction, one again in the Y direction. So that would bring us about there. And then we're going negative five in the Z direction. So if we think about this, well, really, that should lead us around this point here. So this point down here would be 3, 1, and negative 5. Of course, the better you are at drawing, the more accurate your points will be on these three-dimensional graphs. Now, we'll do the final one here, which we'll do in pink. So 2, 4, and 2. So we're going 2 in the x direction. We're going 4 in the y direction. So if we just sort of draw this out, we'd end up around that point, and then we're going two in the z direction, so that would be about there. So this would be two, four, two. And as you can see, it's sometimes difficult to tell in a 3D graph where the point actually is, because that last point we did does look like it's on the y-axis, but there is a third dimension depth to it. So if you can imagine rotating the graph so the x and y were flat, so if we had something like this, and this is the Z, and then X, Y, and X and Y are flat in this case, we of course would see it two points above the surface. So let's talk about equations now. Equations are just really a set or a surface of points. So when we say what does Y equals two represent, what we're really saying here is that X and Z can be anything. So we're specifying a specific value for y, but we're not specifying anything for x and z. So what this gives us is a plane. So here's the point where y equals 2. So it has to take in the full range of x values, and it has to take in the full range of z values. So just to sort of draw this here, and what we end up with is a plane. 
a plane where y equals 2, and x and z can be whatever values they want. What if we say z equals 0? What does that represent? Well, what that means is that we're not going up or down in our third dimension. We're just going through the x and y axis. So this is saying specifically that x and y can be anything. There's no restriction on that. So this should cover all of the x values, all of the y values, but the z point does have to be zero. So it is a flat surface. It doesn't cover the entire z-axis or any part of it other than that one layer where z equals zero. Sorry, I'm using z and z interchangeably. I am Canadian. So what is something like x squared plus y squared equals four represent? Well, we've seen equations like this in two dimensions, and typically it represents a circle. So it's a circle in 2D. But we have to remember we have three axes here. So what this is saying is that z can be anything. So this is going to be a circle. Uh, specifically, this right here is the radius squared. So that's the radius squared. So the radius in this case is going to be a radius of two. So we'll center the circle around the origin just to get our things right. Uh, we'll find two, a radius of two, the extreme points in each of these, and we'll draw our circle to hit these points. It's not, it's not perfect, but it is third to three dimensional here. Now z can be anything. So it's not just this circle where z equals zero, it essentially covers everything above and below. So uh, I'll sort of draw this as a dotted line because it continues on forever, but this is essentially a cylinder. Now, what if we added a restriction? What if we said here x squared plus y squared equals four, but z has to be between negative one and one inclusive? Well, in that case, we're setting limits for how big our cylinder can be. So we could sort of draw the radius like this, so I'm putting this inside, and we would only really account for this area right here. So the circle of radius two between z equals negative one and z equals one. So we just imposed, uh, I don't wanna say a limit because that's a calculus word, but we've imposed another constraint on how high and low our z values can be. So let's talk about distance between points. We now understand the 3D, uh, well, our, our third dimension. Now we know how to do graphs for that. So how can we talk about the distance between two points? And let's just think of, well, a two-dimensional graph first. So let's say you have one point here at x1, y1. You have another point at x2, y2. How do you determine the distance? Well, you just use Pythagoras' theorem. So you take the distance between uh, x2 and x1, so that's going to be x2 minus 1 to account for the difference in x, so that's the change in x. We're going to take a look at the change in y here, so in this case that's going to be y2 minus y1, and then we can use Pythagoras' theorem to get us the distance between those two points. So uh, we know the old Pythagoras theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and in order to get c, which would be the distance in this case, we have to take the square root of those. So I'm going to clear that picture to describe what happens in three dimensions. So three dimensions is the same thing. In fact, I want to illustrate it with this example down here. So for point one, we'll use purple to be consistent with the writing above. So negative two, zero, four. So that's going to put us here and up four points. So this is going to be P1, negative 2, 0, 4. And I'll use orange for the next one, 6, 1, 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're going to go a little bit off the graph here. We're going to go 1 over in the y direction and 1 up in the z direction. So this is going to be 6, 1, 1, which I'll just label as 0.2. Now our goal is to find the distance between these points. So that distance will be the distance between P1 and P2, which we put in absolute value signs to signal distance. 
So really what we're doing here is we're just doing a couple applications of Pythagoras' theorem, except in a third dimension. So instead of doing just the difference between x and y, we're now going to include the difference between uh, the two z points as well. But the formula is the same, we're just expanding it. And you could use this for the fourth dimension, fifth dimension, and so on, although those are much harder to visualize. So let's plug these things into our formula here. We want to find the square root of, well, it's going to be x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. So if we have, say, point 2, let's just make sure I have the colors right, point 2 there, point 1 there, we can simply fill in the gaps. So we are going to have, well, first let's compare our x coordinates. It's going to be 6 minus negative 2 squared plus the difference between y, which is 1 minus 0 squared, plus the difference between z, which will be 4 minus 1 squared. Sorry, that should be backwards in this case. So we'll do 1 minus 4 squared. And then we'll simplify this. So 6 minus negative 2 is the same thing as 6 plus 2, which is 8. So if we square that, we're going to get 64 plus 1 minus 0 squared is going to give us 1, plus 1 minus 4 squared, that'll be negative 3, we square that, and we get 9. So our distance will be the square root of 74. So that is what that distance is there, just using a third dimension application of the Pythagoras theorem, essentially. So let's talk about spheres now. So we can do, we, we saw planes, uh, we saw distance between points, and now let's apply this to a three-dimensional shape, the sphere. So if you remember the equation for a circle in two dimensions that we just really saw a few slides ago, we had x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. That is the equation for a circle in two dimensions. Now, this really is around the origin. So we're not really shifting the position, but this is around the origin 0, 0. And if we plug this back in, this is really like saying x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared is equal to r squared. So if we want to shift it to a different point, let's say we want to center it around 3, 1. We need to shift the x and y values to that point. So what we get is x minus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared, and that equals r squared. And essentially what we're doing here is we're shifting the x and y values by 3 and 1 respectively. So we're going to apply this same thing to a sphere. But now we have three dimensions. We have x, y, and z. So when we shift, we need to, of course, shift all three dimensions. So with an example, what is the equation for a sphere centered at 3, negative 6, 2? Well, let's first draw this out. So this will be 3, negative 6 will be somewhere out here, and then we go up in the up 2, so it'd be around there. Now we're trying to find the equation for a sphere that goes around that point. Okay, so essentially what we could do is create the equation for it around the origin and then just shift those values. So if it's around the origin, we would get x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to, sorry, not, yeah, uh, not zero, the radius squared. So if we shift this to 3, negative 6, and 2, we're going to end up with x minus 3 squared, so that shifts x 3 units, plus y minus negative 6 squared. So we'll just do y plus 6, since if we subtract negative 6, we're really just adding it squared, so that shifts y down six positions. And then we're going to do uh, z minus two squared, so that shifts z up two positions. And then we have that equal to the radius squared. So that would be the equation for that sphere. And whatever the radius is would determine how large it is. So let's see this applied to actual problems. What is the equation for a sphere centered at 3, negative 6, 2 that passes through 1, 2, 1? Well, for the sake of convenience, I am going to take this picture that we've already drawn and 
we'll put this down because we're still looking at the exact same sphere. It's the one centered around 3, negative 6, 2. But here's something different about this problem. So we don't know the radius. We just know that a circle is supposed to go around here. But it has to pass through the point 1, 2, 1. So if we were just to draw this out quickly, what it means is that the radius has to be big enough, I should really draw that bigger, uh, to pass through that point. So really the question is, what is r? What is our radius? So how do we figure this out? Well, let's first draw the equation that we're familiar with for a sphere. So this would be the one that we figured out last time. So x minus 3 squared plus y minus 6 squared plus z minus 2 squared is equal to r squared. And now we're trying to solve for r. What other information do we have? Well, we know one point that goes through it. We know it's 1, 2, 1. So what we can do is we can use essentially a distance formula to tell us how far the center is from that point, and there we can get the radius. So we can plug that value in to x, y, and z, those respective coordinates, in order to get a radius. And once we find that radius, we'll then know the equation for the sphere. So let's do just that. This will be 1 minus 3 squared plus 2 minus 6 squared plus... Oh, hold on a second. I said y minus 6, but that's not right because we should be adding. In this case, we're subtracting negative 6. So let's fix that. It's always good to see mistakes sometimes because as you go through, you'll make mistakes yourself. It's about being able to check that kind of stuff and if you notice that that's fantastic it's also just an excuse <laughs> anyways uh, z minus 2 would be 1 minus 2 squared and that is equal to r squared so let's just solve this quickly so 1 minus 3 would be negative 2 we square that we get 4 plus 2 plus 6 squared well that's 8 squared which is 64 uh, 1 minus 2 is negative 1 we square that we get 1 that's equal to r squared so we get that 69 is equal to r squared which means that, essentially, the root of 69 is equal to r. I swear this number is simply a coincidence. Anyhow, we now have our radius. So we can take our original equation here for our sphere, and we can now plug in the radius that we know. So our final equation will end up being x minus 3 squared plus y plus 6 squared plus z minus 2 squared and that will equal r squared, which is 69. So the radius squared has to be 69 in order for that point, 1, 2, 1, to be hit by the sphere. But again, we're not asking what that point is. We're not asking for a specific point. We're just asking for the general formula. So that's why we're not filling anything within, with x, y, and z. But now we could take any point on our graph, we could plug those values in, and we can see if that sphere passes through that point or not. Because if it does, it'll add up to 69. Okay, a couple practice problems. Uh, the first question I hope that we learned something from, and the second one is simply a standard application of finding a sphere formula. So the first question, what is the distance from 2, negative 1, 3 to the x, y plane? Okay, I want to think visually about this. So once again, I'm going to import the graph previously, but I'm going to remove all of the marks that we made from the other diagram. So what is the xy plane? The xy plane is the plane that covers the x and y axis in its entirety. So that is going to be the xy plane. Now what matters here is that z is equal to zero because it's the xy plane. It is the plane that is on, that, on those two axes. So this is a flat surface on z equals zero. So we can get those values. x and y can be whatever, but z has to be zero. So what's the distance from two negative one three to the xy plane? Well, let's just draw this quickly. So we're gonna have two here, negative one here, and then we'll go up three. Now notice, if we think about where this point is on the surface before we go in our z direction, 
it is touching it. It is touching the xy plane. So the only distance we really have to consider is how far it is above or below the xy plane. So in this case, we can actually find our solution just from the coordinate itself. The distance between z equals 0 and z equals 3 is just a distance of 3. Now why is this? Well, it doesn't matter if we take another angle because we know that the distance to get their shortest will just be a straight line down. So 3 is the distance from that point to the xy plane. So if you're given the xy plane, you just have to consider the distance of the z coordinate. If it is the xz plane, what does that mean? That means that y is equal to 0, so we just have to consider the distance of y, which in which case would be 1, while we take the absolute value of that. Okay, so that's the first problem, and that's more of a visual one, a visual understanding problem. I know some calculus professors will actually teach how to do that, but this is something at this point that you could have solved um, with some picture. Next, find an equation for the sphere with center 2, negative 6, 4, and radius 5. So we'll just plug in our formula. Well, first we'll remember our formula. So this is going to be x minus the shift where the center is. So x minus 2 squared plus y minus negative 6. So that's y plus 6 squared plus, well, z minus 4. We'll square that. That gives us a sphere that has been shifted to a new center point. And then the radius is 5. So radius is 5. That means r equals 5. But remember, this is supposed to equal r squared. So we have to square that. So we'll end up with 25. And that is going to be our equation for the sphere with center 2, negative 6, 4, and radius 5. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below. And hopefully someone or myself will answer. And as always, hit the like button, subscribe, share it. Everything that helps, uh, it helps me immensely. And hopefully we can help you more with some more Calculus 3 videos. So stay tuned for the next one, and I hope to see you there.